Hello and welcome to my next lecture which is going to be on understanding and embracing variance. Um, I'm excited to be talking about this topic because I think understanding and embracing variance is very important for all poker players and not doing so has probably led to the demise of many beginning poker players, those that don't understand variance um, it, and it causes them to give up on the game too quickly. Um, but those of us that really understand variance, we really embrace it and we really don't worry about it. So. Um, We'll go ahead and start with an in introduction. Um, you know, a lot of people have heard about variance, but lots of poker players really don't understand it, and I think it's essential to understanding variance. Um, so, a definition, really, what is it? Well, it's nothing more than the really quick upswings and downswings in poker. So, in other words, right, our heater sessions and then cooler sessions, um, and we call these both positive and negative variance. So, when you're running good, um, that's positive variance. When you're running bad, it's negative variance. And so, again, what's why is this important for me to know? Why do I need to understand and embrace variance? Uh, well. Um, not understanding and embracing variance can neg can lead to negatively influencing your game and your bankroll. Well, why is that? Well, when you're running bad, um, people begin to play poorly, and that leads to playing tilted. And as we all know, being tilted is not a good thing because people end up spewing off chips and by making bad decisions, and lots of times end up going broke. Um, conversely, if you're running really well, people get that syndrome that they're invincible, and they can also play fairly poorly and spew off chips that they probably shouldn't have spewed off, even though it's going to be much less than if you're running badly. Um, you really don't notice it, but it, it is happening. So let's talk a little more about both negative and positive variance. I think this is um, a, a fairly easy to understand concept. Negative variance is really categorized by our downswings. A lot of people will call them cooler sessions when they're getting cold cards and they really can't win a hand. So if you're sitting down, for example, if you're playing live, you sit down in a card room at a table and you sit there for three hours and you can't get a good hand or when you are getting a good hand or a good draw, you're never winning, you're never catching your draws. Um, your big hands are never holding up, right? That's that's a consequence of negative variance. Conversely, positive variance are those upswings, right? When you're having a heater session, when you're catching cards and you really can't lose a hand, you know, you, you're catching pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket queens left and right. They're holding up a majority of the time. Whenever you have a flush draw or a straight draw, you're hitting it a majority of the time and you're just really building up your um, your stack of chips at the table and you're doing really well. So that's the consequence of positive variance. Um, and, and these are categorized by the time frame in which they happen. And when we're looking at variance, we're really looking at short time frames. So let's let's consider these in terms of a single session of two hours playing at a live table. Right? Either you're doing really bad or you're doing really good. And so Let's talk a bit further about both of them. So negative variance often leads to bad play because you're not doing well, um, you're not playing well, it really influences your mind and um, your emotional state. That often leads to bad play. Either you're playing overly aggressive or you're playing too passive. And this also causes you to go on tilt. And as we know, when people go on tilt, they tend to spew off chips. Um, lots of them tend to spew off all their chips and they leave. And then if we look at the other side, if we look at positive variance, right, that leads to I'm invincible. This is a syndrome where, you know, I can't lose a pot. I'm just running so hot that I'm going to go after every draw. Um, I'm going to overplay my pocket aces and my pocket kings because I can't lose. Um, this also leads to bad plays, right? We shouldn't be chasing all of our draws if we're not getting a good prize. We shouldn't be overplaying aces when it looks like we can't win the pot, you know, with it double paired and all we have is a pair of aces and there's two pairs on the board, things like that. Um, this often causes us to spew off chips even though we're still winning. So positive variance and negative variance can both lead to playing bad and spewing off chips. Um, another thing about negative variance is that running bad doesn't always mean you're playing bad. Sometimes it does, other times it doesn't. It really depends upon the player. A good player can be running bad, um, but they're typically not always playing bad. It really depends upon you, and you really don't know at that time, in that moment. Um, it really just depends upon um, in the future when you look back at your hands how well you have played them based upon looking at your database and same thing in regards to running good running good doesn't always mean you're playing good 
because you could be playing very bad and winning lots of chips. And, and I'll give an example of both of these. So last year, uh, I went on a trip to Las Vegas with uh, friends and family, and I was at the Excalibur playing uh, spread limit poker. Um, for those of you that aren't aware of what spread is, it's kind of um, a, a hybrid of limit poker and no limit, where they give you uh, um, a spread of of bet sizes that you can bet on every round. So say, for example, I don't remember what it was, but it might have been something like uh, a $2 to $12 spread. So on every round, you could bet up at a minimum of two dollars and a maximum of twelve dollars. Um, there was a player there two nights in a row. The first night, he was just running hot. He could not lose a hand, and um, he was chasing all of his draws. He was hitting all of his draws. Um, I think I saw him get, in a matter of two hours, I think I saw him get like three or four full houses. I, I believe he got quads at least two or three times. He hit a high hand jackpot several times, and he was just sucking out on people left and right. Um, I remember getting pocket queens one hand, and he called me with like a a six nine offsuit, and he called me down. Uh, he flopped a six, and he ended up uh, I was betting all rounds. He ended up rivering a six, so he was just running hot, and he necessarily wasn't playing well, but he was getting cards, and he was playing all of his hands. He's chasing all his draws even though he wasn't getting proper odds to do so but hey in his eyes he was winning money um, the funny thing at the end of the night is that he was only up around I would say two-thirds of a buy-in um, his chips stack and, and the amount of chips he had at the table just varied greatly um, I would say they varied you know um, a buy-in up and down several times throughout the night now the next day I was back there playing again with um with my buddy and my dad and he was at the table again well this time he was playing um the exact same way he was playing before but he wasn't catching any of his draws none of his hands were holding up and what ended up happening is he went to the ATM in a matter of I say an hour and a half I saw him go to the ATM at least two or three times and by the time I had nicknamed him ATM um, yes I didn't call to him but you know within my mind I said wow this guy's an ATM he's just spewing off ships so if you think about positive variance and negative variance um, it can really influence the way that you play um, this guy was playing very bad even though he was catching chips on a positive variance upswing and same thing with the negative variance he wasn't um, catching any of his draws it caused him to lead more badly um, it caused him to continue to chase his draws he got tilted kept going to the ATM and continued to spew off more chips so what causes variance well it's really just the luck of the draw of the cards, right? We know what cards are remaining in the deck, but we don't know in terms of the randomness of what they're going to come out. So it's really just the randomness of the cards and overall luck of when they come out. And so another question is, well, how long will variants last, both positive or negative? We really can't determine that. Um, it really just depends. It varies in length depending upon the randomness of the cards and how they're dealt. I've heard of people that have gone on 100,000 hand uh, variant swings and I recently went on around a 23,000 hand um, break-even swing where I went up and I was up and I went back down. So um, yeah, it can happen over a long period of time. And this gives you an example. So I took a snapshot of my database. Um, of around a 40k hand sample and what you notice on the larger graph is it doesn't look too bad right um, you'll notice that there's some variance up and down and over here I ended up taking this a smaller snapshot and put a straight line to give you an idea of the variance um, you know when I'm running well positive variance and underneath when I'm running bad so if you know if I was to zoom in right here or for example here you would see the upswings and the downswings but when we look at variance over a long portion of time it all evens out so I have the straight line average and for here this was playing 2 and L I mean sorry 5 and L and 10 and L um, I profited around three hundred dollars and so between the two um, you know it really depends on uh, the buy-in but let's just say if it was 10 and L that's 30 buy-ins I was up at 5 and L that would be 60 buy-ins so taking an average of the two is probably somewhere between 40 and 45 buy-ins combined and if you just look at this from far away you just look at the straight line it looks okay but if you just look at little portions here and here you know there's some variance there there's some variance there 
There's some here, definitely. You know, it's everywhere. In the short term, you're going to have upswings and downswings, but over the long run, it's always just going to even out. So, I kind of want to do um, another example, and I decided to do a coin flip example to show you how variance is magnified in the short term and how it kind of evens out and it's um, diluted in the long term. So, what I did is I used a simulator and I did a very basic coin flip example, right? So, if we're flipping a coin, right? There's a 50% chance it's going to either land on heads or 50% chance it's going to land on tails. And this is very similar to um, what you hear as a coin flip scenario in poker. Let's say, for example, somebody has ace-king and somebody else has pocket queens. Um, the pocket queens, yes, it's a 55% favorite, and the ace-king is a 45% dog, but it's close enough to be a coin flip situation. So let's look at it from that perspective as well. Um, if I And the way I have it set up here is I have heads, number of times it hits heads and percentage and tails, number of times and percentage it hits tails based upon the number of tosses. Um, and I went and I did these independently. I did five tosses, 10 tosses, 25, 50, and so forth, all the way up to 2,000. And if you look at this, for example, if we look at the 10 tosses, you'll notice that the tails here in this sample win 70% of the time when it should have only won 50% of the time. Um, again, if we look at the sample of 50 tosses, heads won 66% of the time when it should have just won 50% of the time, and tails did much worse. And you'll notice also on, um, for example, 25 tosses, 100 tosses, um, heads won 6% more than it should have, and tails lost 4% more. But as we increase our sample sizes, 250, 500, 1,000, and 2,000 sample sizes, all independent. You'll notice the variation is much smaller, right? Um, here we have 51% and 49%, so pretty close to dead even. Again, on 500, we're 51 and 49. On 1,000, we're 50.5 and 49.5. And then on 2,000, we're 49% here and 51% here. So what this shows us is that if we look at a small sample size, we're going to see variance magnified. But as we increase the sample size, it's really going to be diluted and we're going to minimize the effect of variance because over time as the sample size increases, you know, odds take place and we know that 50-50 in the long run is going to take place and you're noticing this at 250 samples or more in this coin flip, coin flip scenario. So the main takeaway from here is that yes, you're going to see both cooler sessions and heater sessions in the short term you know on a day-to-day -day session basis but as you play over time you know this is really going to be minimized and you're really not going to um, be feeling the effects of variance long term so let's talk about dealing with variance and it's really simple if you're running bad take a break and when I say take a break this really depends on on you as a person and your personality. Um, some people can take a five minute break, some people can take a 10 minute break, other people need to take you know a very long extended break. I've taken a week long break before and I've taken a 10 minute break before. It all depends on how bad I'm running and how well I'm feeling about my game. Um, again, if you're running good, don't fall into that trap that you're invincible because you're not. So. Don't think that you can chase every draw and hit it. Don't think that your aces are going to hold up 100% of the time. Um, just don't fall into that trap because if you do, you're going to end up spewing off ships you probably shouldn't have. And lastly, embrace variance, right? You can't control it. You understand that it's going to happen. Just embrace it and try to not let it affect your game. Just stay on your A game. Don't worry about it. Know that it's going to happen. And over the long run, it's really not going to harm you. Um, and getting back to embracing variance is um, really embracing variance minimizes tilt because when we understand that luck happens, the luck of the draw of the cars really is out of our control, um, we're not going to worry about it and we're not going to tilt over it. Yeah, if we run horrendously bad in one session, we might get tilted, but we understand that that's coming from variance and we know how to combat our emotions and not play um poorly and badly as well as somebody that's not a good player might play. 
And then lastly, don't be results oriented in the short term. Um, what I mean by this is that if you're running really, really well in one session and you win nine or ten buy-ins, like for example, um, one session about two months ago, in probably like a two-hour time frame, for tabling online, I won nine buy-ins. Um, a beginning player might say, wow, I'm really good. I'm, I'm an excellent poker player. Um, why am I playing these stakes? I need to move up. Don't be results oriented in the long term. Instead, be focusing on your game instead. Um, long term, yes, 25,000 hands, 50,000 hands, or 100,000 hands later, you can look at your database and your long term win rate. Then you can determine how good you are. And, and then also, in terms of being results oriented, the same goes for when you're running bad. You know, let's say you sit down at a table and you're playing online for tabling, you lose um, five buy ins in one hour. Well, go back and look at the hands and how you play them. Don't just automatically assume that you're playing bad and you shouldn't be playing poker and you're a terrible player. You really need to look at the hands on an individual basis and really determine on how what you played them to determine if you've been playing well or not. So let's go ahead and sum up this lecture. Um, I think I covered a lot of different topics but I think it's very important to understand variance and embrace it. Um, so first of all, variance is an essential aspect to the game of poker, and we really must understand it, right? The element of luck, the randomness of the cards, really causes short-term variance, right? That's really going to determine how well we're doing in terms of if we're running good or running bad. Um, when we experience larger variance upswings and downswings, um, we will see those in small sample sizes. But as you play more, they're really going to be diluted, right? And I showed that both in my um, my sample of my database on my winnings, and as well as that coin flip scenario. Um, also, remember winning and losing. If you're running good, you're running bad. Um, really doesn't mean you're playing bad or playing well. It's really determined based upon um, variance itself as well. And you really need to go back and and determine how well you played um, after you played the hands. So, remember. Don't really ever rely on short-term results to determine um, how well you're doing. If you know that's really not going to tell you if you're a good player or not. You really need to look at a larger sample size. So don't let variance determine how well you're playing. Um, really, just focus on playing your A game. And when you get a large sample size of hands, I recommend around 50k hands or greater. Um, that way you can look at a large sample size. Variance will be minimized, and that will give you a semi-confident win rate. And lastly, just embrace variance, right? Don't be results oriented and try your best not to tilt to the table or don't fall into the trap of I'm invincible. So I hope you got a lot out of this lecture. I think understanding and embracing variance is very important for all players. And, you know, like I said, just don't let variance tilt you and don't think that you are invincible if you're crushing the game in one session. Just take it all with a grain of salt and analyze your hands off the table, analyze your play off the table, and um, you'll be a better player for that. So I appreciate you watching this lecture. I know it's been fairly lengthy. Um, thanks again, and that concludes our lecture. To enroll in our 100% free two-hour Poker Fundamentals course, click the link below.